Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice, Print, Roleplay. In this episode, I'm going to go over how to install a glass bed on your FDM 3D printer. Alright, let's get to it. Now, I want to make a note about this process. If you're using a BL Touch or a similar auto bed leveling system, this process will be very similar with some key differences. The main difference being, on an auto bed leveling system, your probe is your Z limit switch. So you don't have a physical switch you're going to adjust, instead you're going to use your Z offset. This will typically be done through the printer menu, and if you don't know how to do that, feel free to reach out to me and I'll gladly help out. First off, we're going to tighten down the four knobs underneath the bed. You want to get them to the point where the springs are about 80% compressed. This is going to give us a little bit of wiggle room later on, and help make sure that we don't destroy the new bed whenever we put it on. Next, you're going to go to your printer's menu and auto home your printer. And then once that's done, you're going to go back into your menu and disable stepper drivers. This is going to allow us to move the nozzle right above the bed and move the bed just a little bit more. We're just trying to make sure that we have a good gauge for how far the nozzle is from the bed. And you can see here that with my springs about 80% compressed, I have a good two or three millimeter gap between the top of my bed and the bottom of that nozzle. And again, this just gives us a little bit of a safety net so that if the new bed you're putting on is thicker than the old bed you're taking off, you won't immediately crush it whenever you auto home your printer. Now with all that done, you can go ahead and take your old bed off. If it's an old glass bed like this one or one of the standard beds, it's just four clips and then it comes right off. You can see that on this glass bed, it's pretty well beat up, the coating is starting to rub off and peel away, and it's just all around kind of messed up. So after two years of use, it's pretty common to have to replace your bed. Now real quick, I want to talk about why glass beds are so helpful. You can see in this illustration that if you have a warped subplate, so the plate that sits underneath your build plate, if you have a more flexible build plate, it is going to contour to that, that dip that you have in the middle. But if you have a glass plate, which isn't going to contour, it's going to stay pretty flat, it'll help ride over those differences and help make up for some variances you have in your subplate, which can be really helpful. If you're interested in upgrading to a glass bed, you can find a link in the description for the one that I'm using here. Another really great advantage to using a glass bed is that they typically have a coating on them that will help models stick whenever they're hot, and then once they cool down, it helps them pop off as well. So it's a really great option for just making everything a little easier to use. Now one thing I wanted to mention, whenever you're putting your binder clips back on, always make sure you put them a little closer to the center than the outside because you don't want the tool head to hit that whenever it's doing its purge line. So with all that taken care of, now we're going to heat up the nozzle to whatever your printing temperature is for the filament that you're using. In my case, it's going to be 200. And then the same thing for your bed. In my case, it's going to be 60 because it's typically where I start at when I'm printing PLA. Then what I like to do is pull out about two inches of filament just to make sure that we're not going to have a consistent ooze coming out of the nozzle and we can level it without having all of that extra junk everywhere. Then I'm going to bring the nozzle back over to the same place we had it before, and again I'm going to check and make sure that I have that gap with my springs about 80% compressed. If you don't have that gap, if it's too close and the nozzle's hitting the bed, then what we're going to have to do is adjust our Z limit switch, which is what this is here. What this is is basically just a switch that whenever the printer comes down, it clicks that button, and that tells the printer, okay, I've reached the absolute maximum lowest distance I can go in the Z direction. So if you want to move this up or down, all we have to do is loosen these two screws. If you move it up, you're going to cause the nozzle to be higher off the bed. And if you move it down, you're going to cause the nozzle to be lower, closer to the bed. So be really careful with this. Only move it in very small increments because it makes a big difference. So just be really careful and very cautious with this. But remember that your springs are still pretty well compressed right now. So wherever you end up with your limit switch, make sure that it gives you at least a one millimeter gap between your bed and your nozzle. Oh, and if you like tinkering with your printer, I highly recommend you get one of these screwdriver sets. No joke, I use this thing at least once a day. Then we're going to level the printer. I like using the paper method, but you use whatever method works for you. Next up, since I already had the gold filament installed, I decided to grab one of these dwarven coin models as a test print. And it's always a good idea to watch your first layer, but especially when you've made changes to your printer. You can see here that I'm making some adjustments because I'm seeing that my level wasn't quite right and my first layer wasn't going down the way I wanted it to. But after some adjustments, everything came out pretty great. And with the new bed, you can see I'm getting awesome adhesion. I can move the entire bed back and forth with one finger on the model. But it still pops off really easily. Alright, so there are all the reasons why I think a glass bed is one of the best options for your FDM 3D printer. And hopefully now you know how to install one. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'll gladly help. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and I really appreciate it. 
And if you like the work that I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, you can find my Patreon information down below. Alright, now let's go print something.